Okay, we are on. So I'm here with Brian Atterbury. Welcome, Brian. Welcome. To, I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Jake. Yeah, you bet. Now your screen says Jennifer, but I know you're not Jennifer. So no, that's my wife. She yeah. is the boss. Yeah. I'm using her laptop. Mine's in the. It mine's in my my bag. I didn't want to get it out, and she's already all set up. So yeah, exactly. Well, I'm actually in my car. My uh, Wi-Fi went down uh, this morning, and so I started scrambling. And so I'm actually sitting here in front of McDonald's in my car using their Wi-Fi. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I had to get creative. It's early. a happy place more ways than one now. Huh? Exactly. So let's talk about health and fitness in front of McDonald's here. That'd be ironic. <laughs> no, um, man, I appreciate you jumping on with me this morning and just wanted to, uh, you know, you're obviously in your home. I'm in my car. We're not in the gym training. <laughs> so it's, uh, I think you, you mentioned unprecedented times and that's exactly what it is. And Absolutely. it's a unique time, but, you know, unique opportunity too. And so tell us what's been going on with you in this unprecedented time. So about, oh gosh, it's been about, probably about two or three weeks ago, you start hearing all this stuff in the news and, you know, Oklahoma City shut down first and then, you know, in terms of gyms and bars and so forth. And we started going, oh my gosh, what's going on? I mean, is this, yeah. I mean, is this like, a, is this a dream, a nightmare? Is that we living in the twilight zone here? What's yeah. happening? You know, people were immediately like, oh, you have to shut down. You know, you know Oklahoma County shut down. I'm like, no, Oklahoma City shut down. And so I, I held on till you know, we were told otherwise by City, you know, Council of Edmond. And, uh, of course, we honored that. And, and we had been, you know, we could feel it coming on that week before. I had several clients who were like, hey, you know, I'm going to take a break for a while until this all blows over. Because we have, we have a good variety of clients, but we have several that are, definitely over 40 and um you know they're they're a little nervous about the reports about um people over 60 uh immunocompromised being more susceptible to the the COVID-19 and and so they you know understandably were were anxious and it's frustrating because you're on uh, is this you know a media hype I mean I think if there's anything that's to me to be learned from some of this is I personally you know I do think it's serious. Um, I think we have to listen. We have to pay attention. You can't ignore that it's definitely affecting, you know, millions across the world. And it is definitely killing some people. Um, right. Whether they're older, immunocompromised, for other reasons, they're still, I don't want to see, you know, my grandmother die. And, exactly. and so it's, it's a big deal. But I think one of the things to me that I'm hoping that the media learns from this, in my personal opinion, is that you know it's kind of like the classic boy who cried wolf that we grew up learning and i feel like so for so many years the media sensationalizes everything so what's happened in my personal opinion is that a lot of people have just kind of didn't take it serious they're like here we go again it's, it's media hype again it's you know they're sensationalizing and i and i do think they have to stop and ask themselves how many things are re is it really a big deal and versus are what are we sensationalizing? Because yeah. I do think it's like the boy who cried wolf. Everybody went, I don't know. Here we go again, media. Right. So, and I do think that that becomes a serious responsibility that they need to to be aware of that that people have blown it off a lot of them because of. But it's definitely you know affected a lot of people, and you know we're doing online training and. And we're, you know, I've been doing it for a long time, but we we start putting programs for home videos with my training. Got a I don't know if McDonald's Wi Fi is slower. Oh, <laughs> it get kind that of froze right. a little bit. <laughs> Well, we've been doing the, the, the people can. Some stuff for families and all that. And originally I was going to have it where it was like you had to have a code to get in you had to be a results member then i decided you know i, I think i just want to launch this for the public 
So mm -hmm. they can get on our Facebook and they can they can they can just click on there and watch any of the things that we are loading for that. That's um, awesome. Simply because you know I do think people need some positive stuff. They need activity. You, you and I both know physical activity is a major stress reliever. Um, yeah. There's a lot of kids. I've got a 13 year old and a 16 year old at home right now. They're you know missing out on track right now. Missing out on pants for my daughter. They're both yeah. in track. Um, my son's a big workout kid too, you know, and he's, he just got out of wrestling a little bit ago before track started. And it's like, it's neat activities and they don't know what's going on. I mean, they do, but they don't. I mean, we're, we're adults and we don't even know what's going on. And yeah. it's, it's just super important for people to stay moving. You know, it's, yeah. it, you've got to, we have yeah, you do. at the house and I've been trying to do it an hour a day on it just because I'm like, I just need to get that stress out. So, so tell us a little bit about results, kind of your history on, on training and when you started results, what all that looks like. Yeah, so we, we uh, I started personal training when I was in college at OU when I was a sophomore back in 94. And I was getting my degree um, in uh, health and sports sciences from OU, got certified to the uh, NFPA, National Fitness Professionals Association. I uh, started training part-time. I started working for uh, what was called then called the Adams course um, back in the day. I was, I was one of their, head, I was their head trainer, actually. I helped develop their um, personal training program. They had only trained athletes um, before, so I would help train their incoming uh, staff during the summer. They would use a lot of college athletes to train the high school and college athletes, um, and I would basically educate the trainers on how they need to do the programs, and then we, I started with another guy named Chris Feller, who is uh, at, um, uh, I went blank, um, one of the private schools here in the city, uh, Heritage Hall, uh, okay. Coach G, they call him, and he's been over there for many, many years now, and he's he and I both got together for the Adam Sports and started their adult fitness training, and then when I, I graduated in 97 um, from OU, I decided to do my own thing, and I worked out of the old Bulls gym, it was on Broadway Memorial, that is now with that um, car maxes um, mm -hmm. and I was there six and a half years and we opened up results in November of 03 basically because I was getting so many phone calls and I was referring my clients out to other trainers um, getting nothing for it uh, so when I opened up results I decided to make it how I wanted it to be where um, one, we call it Results Fitness and Nutrition Center because nutrition is 80% you know, mm -hmm. as far as the physiology goes. And I wanted to have a training environment like I wanted to have, which was a lot of people don't understand there's no, you know, any kind of requirements for, for formal requirements for trainers. And I wanted to have people with kinesiology type degrees, exercise science type degrees, and then certifications. And so that's been our policy for our full-time staff to, to have that. So we get a lot of UCO kinesiology students and practicum students internships. I do some guest lecturing up at UCO's kinesiology department. Um, they have a, what's called a facilities management class that I use to speak at every summer. Um, sometimes I'll talk to intro to kinesiology. And then, um, so we've been doing that. And then since 03 and then uh, February last year, we moved into, we had bought and remodeled the old Lawton Bills Cascada at 15th and Kelly, a restaurant, which is totally thinking outside the box. Um, mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful building. It almost looks like you're in an Aspen Lodge. But the main reason was we had to be honest with ourselves and say, you know, uh, we need a bigger a, a group exercise program. That's a big part of the demographic we were missing. Right. So we added in yoga, Pilates, you know, core classes, boot camps, you name it. So we have over like 33 classes currently. And that's been a great, great blessing. We have child care. And then we added our 801 Nutrition Club, right. which we do the Herbalife Shakes and Teas. And that all, because they had a bar in there, so I was able to remodel that. So awesome. That, all that stuff's been like the last year. And it's been, it's it's a work in progress. And here we yeah. are now dealing with this. So. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you just opened up the new facility and now you can't even go in it. But, yeah. So right so out of here, it's just, here we are, 13 months, I guess, technically. So. Right. So tell me about what you, your years of personal training, working with people, developing, because so much of transformation, development, what's required to show up consistently to get the results, it requires an internal dynamic, a discipline, and a focus, and a commitment, and all these things that has to happen on the inside of a person. And so I'm, I'm curious about what you've learned about that 
as it applies to your to people's transformation in their personal training journey and then and then how it applies in situations like this that we're going through right well i always say the strongest muscle that that i'm going to transform on someone's going to be their mind um, yeah if there's anything i learned through the years of my own training i was you know i'm a former mr oklahoma i was in mr oklahoma 2001 i bodybuilded competitively for 12 years when yeah. i was in high school i did you know football did all the different all the different sports ultimately that's why i got into bodybuilding i was looking at e1 scholarship for football and i had an acl and a shoulder reconstruction uh, made the decision to take an academic scholarship instead to ou um, and then got into bodybuilding when i was in, in college but ultimately what i've learned through the years is we can do a lot more than we think we can. yeah and mm -hmm. i think that is that's a big part of what we're supposed to teach as trainers you know people ask me all the time i'm I'm 45 years old now and I'm I still train hard. Do I train as hard as I did when I was competing? No. I'm 45 years old and yeah. pretty much honestly. You just <laughs> no, but I, you know, when I was competing, get judged for is a different story, but I still train harder than most people. But the whole thing is for me is is that, you know, you can do a lot more than you think you can. You yeah. you have to tell yourself, you know, you know, when people say, Brian, you know, what what's your secret? How you stay so motivated? And I'm like, well, I'll tell you my secret. My secret is I'm not always motivated. I just do it anyway. Mm, you know, yeah. if you if you wait until you're motivated or you wait right. until you quote feel like it, you're you're not gonna do it most of the time. I mean, yeah. this week is a great example. I mean, <laughs> I have I can promise you I felt like laying on the couch more than I felt like, you know, making myself work out. But I know <laughs> from what I teach and I know from what I've experienced that if I don't make myself feel good on that cardio or even if I you know my weight workout is more of a maintenance that day than it is and I breaking a world record I know when I get done the physiological release that I get um I help my share and so mm -hmm. you just have to tell yourself to do it even if you don't feel like it. yeah yeah that's so good don't wait on the motivation the motivation comes after the action as you start then you start getting more motivated <laughs> and exactly. I never regretted doing it when I got done. I was always glad. Right. Yeah. And I know you're a believer and so you're a Christian. And so how has that played a part in your journey and how you work with your with your clients and, and then how is it impacting you know your peace and your mindset where you're at today? All right. Well I definitely think the appropriate word is a journey because it's not it's not a destination. It's a yeah. constant ebb and flow, up and down. I mean I always tell people I say there's anything that I've learned from being a business owner um, is that regardless of how hard I work or how smart I may think I am, um, I can't do this without the Lord. And yeah. because, you know, and, and if, if now isn't an example of that, then there's nothing good. Right. <laughs> because you, and I can't outwork this. I mean, can I, can, am I going to work hard? Am I going to get creative? Are we coming up with other things to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's not enough still. It has to be right. his blessing. It has to be his his guidance. It has to be his wisdom. It has to be those doors that open up. It has to be opportunities like, you know, right now where you and I are getting a witness for him. You know, I told myself, you know, that during this process that I'm going to continue to be positive. Doesn't mean that I'm not anxious sometimes. And I know he says sure. be for nothing, uh, <laughs> but it's easier said than done sometimes. Yeah. And uh, so I have to remind myself of that daily. He does have the ability to move mountains and we have a mountain to move right now yeah and so um through the years i've always felt like this is my ministry um i have offered and i'm not perfect if anybody knows me knows that um, and i think that's the refreshing thing is this isn't about being perfect and we, yeah. have, we have grace through jesus and that's exactly. and i need it for sure, for sure. yeah <laughs> but um it's it's an awesome opportunity when you can be real with people because I think one of the big things that turns off people to religious people um, mm -hmm. sometimes is that sometimes religious people to people that are non-believers come across as judgmental, come across as holier than thou, come across as, well, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you did that. Well, I, I tell people up front, I, I screw up all the time, you know, but yeah. I know where my heart is. And ultimately what matters is God knows where my heart is. And, um, yeah. And I know that I'm nothing without him, truly. And and I think the fact that I can be real with people that I'm not a try to be perfect or I mean I might try to be perfect, but I know I'm not gonna be. Yeah. And that comes into play every day. And the other thing is, you know, I think that 
you know, I, I've used this analogy a lot with people is that, you know, in a fitness journey, we, we battle every day trying to eat right and trying to fight the temptations of the world because to me, you know, fitness and sin have a lot to do with each other in the sense that it's always easier to eat bad and be lazy. And, and you can see that you can feel, you know, the, the, the fast foods and the, and the garbage we put in our body real quick it gives us immediate gratification. Right. Um, but with fitness and nutrition, you know, yeah, you gotta be disciplined. You gotta be disciplined. You gotta be disciplined. And finally you'll start to see the results of it. And I really think that's a lot to do with faith. Cause you know, yeah. we, we sometimes don't realize the results we're going to see as believers until way down the road. It's mm -hmm. not always like you turn around one day and you become a Christian and you prayed that morning and boom, you, everything is great. And there's no problems. The Bible says when in this life you have trouble, not if, um, yeah. you know, and that's, that's a hard one because gosh, wouldn't that be awesome if we could just pray and it all just goes away. I, mean, right. I, <laughs> I think we have to have power, power through prayer. I think, I think the world is seeing that right now. Um, mm -hmm. I think, frankly, I don't think God caused this COVID-19, but I think he's allowed it. And I think that he's, he's going to use it for good. If people will turn to him and recognize that we need him. Right. We, we've really gone the wrong direction the last 10 years in this world. I feel like more than, than any 10-year any period in life, in my, in my right. opinion. You know? right. And right. I think part of it is because of, we have the internet. We have stuff that can be delivered the same token we have the internet and stuff that can be delivered on a good thing kind of like what we're doing right now yeah exactly praise god i love what you said a, a little bit ago you know as trainers we kind of we have to have that that fight that grit the determination uh to do something that you know our flesh wants to go like you said chill on the couch and relax just like everybody does but whenever you take on the role of a leader and a coach then you have to lead the way. And so you have to give attention to your body and you have to just fight and work and grind. That's part of the mentality of a coach and a trainer. And so when you face a situation like COVID, like the coronavirus, like you said, you can't really do anything about it. You feel, you feel vulnerable. You feel like I, I would go fight if I could, but I don't know how. And it feels like the opposite is being required of us is, no, stay home and don't do anything. And that just goes against our nature. <laughs> uh, like right. we want to go and just change it. And, yeah. you know, and so that's where you have to, we find ourselves depending on the Lord even more in this time than ever before. And it becomes very obvious that, uh, that I, I read a, a meme or a quote the other day that said, um, you feel like you lose th this time makes you feel like you've lost control but the reality is you never were in control right and that there's so many things that are outside of our control that this is really bringing to light that you know what it never was in your control that really we have to trust him every single day and that's what it comes down to because after all this passes and i believe it will we have to remember that that ultimately he's in control he has a plan that's working out and we just submit to him and, and follow him so i love that and he's a good God and it's easy to follow a good God. It's easy to trust a good God. And, uh, so I, it's central to my life and essential to how I work with people. And I'm always attracted to other coaches and trainers who believe and, and have him as their center, because I know that the way you do things, the way you train people and approach life is different. It's different than the way people approach life and train people without Jesus. And because he changes everything. And so I appreciate, I appreciate your faith. I appreciate uh, how real it is to you and how you bring that into everything you do. I think God honors it. And, you know, you're going to see, even in this time, an increase and in him opening up brand new doors because of this. So I really believe that. It's my prayer over you and your business, your family. So thank you. I appreciate it. about it. Yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely, you know, have a got to learn you know during this process that we can't do it without him i mean we have to depend and i think that um i think the world hopefully will will pay attention to that and as much as the only thing i'd say about what we could do as far as going out and fight is is that we have roman spiritual warfare and mm -hmm. i think that you know the, the the enemy wants to knock us when we're down he's going to yeah. find that crack in our armor so in, in the sense of being a, a warrior spirit, which I definitely feel like you and I are, it's like 
this is a time where, yeah, we can fly, but it's a different kind of fly. It's, it's a different kind of fly. It's involving battle ropes and flipping tires. Yeah. It's involving, you know, spiritual warfare. And being an example, even when you don't feel like it, because sometimes, yeah, sometimes I just want to get on Facebook and go, what? You know, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's at the same token, I got to remember that I've been given a opportunity to be a leader um, and ultimately for him. And I'm praying that, you know, he's he's um, watching and I know he is. He is. Um, he is. Mm. That's good. Our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. I love it. I'm glad you brought that up because there is a fight and and our obligation, our, our uh, responsibility is in the spirit you know and to take on that spiritual battle and, and we know we have the victory already so um i know that like like we just said this thing will pass the doors will reopen and i believe because of it we're going to be changed we're going to be in a new place as leaders and coaches and and people will be in a new place and we're going to be able to we're going to have a new opportunity already I th i've seen new opportunity work with working with people because people are more open to the spirit more open to calling out to god in prayer and and uh you know hungry and, and realizing their need for more than just what they can do for themselves right um, yeah one of the things i've noticed when i posted some things you know i posted a testimony and one of the things and i'll tell you this is a cool story so the other day we were at the gym and you know it was just me and my wife and a couple of staff members working on stuff for our online online stuff and I got done and I was doing my own workout. And I went to our uh, aerobics room and I was doing deadlifts and I'd get up, I'd do a set, I'd walk around, I'd have a conversation with God. It was raining. And, um, and I, at one point during the um, prayer, during my conversation, I, I yeah. prefer to say, I love it. Uh, Cause I'm just, I'm like, God, dude, <laughs> come on, I need some help here. Um, I said, you know, give me, give me double for my trouble. You know, yeah. I said, uh, I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be positive for you. Give me double for my trouble. But at that time, not five minutes later, the sun came out mm. and I look out the window and I'm going, ah, it's raining and the sun came out. And you said, you know what? I bet there, I bet there's a, a rainbow out there. So I walked out, uh, the side of the building, looked back over our building and not only was there one rainbow, but there was two. <laughs> and I love it. Oh my gosh, Jake. I mean, I just started bawling. I oh did. man. I was just like, not five minutes before, I'm saying, give me double for my trouble. And he just you know, <laughs> promises to that rainbow. And he turns around and gives me two rainbows over the top of my wow. gym. I took a picture of it. Um, and I said, yeah, this is, I do believe God's going to help us through this. This is what yeah. I think this means. The next day, I, you know, I went back and I told the full story because, frankly, at the moment, I was just so overcome that I just was like, I, I got to post this. I got to give, yeah. give him the glory and give him the praise. And, and um, I do feel like it was for a reason. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and the challenge of it is the next day you have, you know, a day where you're feeling anxious and a day where you're, you know, you have to turn back around and remember what had just happened. And right. remember, he does have the ability to move mountains. And I yeah. think... And that is scriptural. That's true. That's that's a reminder that we have to remind ourselves yeah. that he does have the ability to move mountains, whether it's your 100 pound weight loss, whether it's your business that's struggling because of COVID, whether it's your marriage that's struggling yeah. because of who knows why, um, raising kinds um, yeah. living all lives of battles. You know, it's it's something we have to all do. It's that part of this wellness journey that you can't be complete. I don't, I've seen plenty of people, you know, when I competed in bodybuilding, you know, I did national level even and, and um, have a few years I can look back and I still go to the shows on occasion. Somebody helps me help them. I really never liked to help bodybuilders because I was doing it for me only. It was kind of my thing. <laughs> when I retired, I had some people come to me and say, Hey, we help me. You know, I was like, okay, I kind of reluctantly, it wasn't something I ever tried to, to pursue as far as a profession right, right. and training, ironically. Um, I train, you know, my Miss America, Miss USA girls primarily and, and, and right. then everyday people with, you know, hip replacements or diabetes for that matter. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it's one of those things I watched a lot of these people that their entire focus was their physique was looking good. was the vanity of it all. And I don't think yeah. there's anything wrong with pursuing those things as long as you understand that you are more than that, you know, yeah. and, and the year you know my wife is was one of my you know 
clients and that was a rare thing. And I, I think I dated one other girl ever before I didn't, you know, I like to say fish off my own dock. Yeah. Um, but she is a wonderful Christian woman. And that was one of the things we were dating when I was prepping for Mr. Oklahoma years ago, but she stood through me, by me through, you know, when I had a shoulder reconstruction and I went from mm. my best to my worst all in about a six month period. And, you know, and, and that's the thing is we got to find something deeper than, you know, the fitness is awesome. It's important. It's definitely, I think it feeds your soul too, because you can see what discipline can do, but you also have to be disciplined in the spirit. And, you know, and I think that, you know, a lot of these people, it's so good to be fit. It's so good to be, you know, well, the well has to include your spiritual well. Exactly. I, mean, I, I know you see this, you see, and I, and ironically, I work with models and, you know, beauty queens and all that but i i even as a person who does that i i, I do want to shake some of these girls that um i see on facebook and instagram and all they do is post pictures that in my opinion are probably not the best representation of what they're about and what they, what they're, right. I, don't, I don't know what they think they're going to accomplish by that but, i mean it's okay to be beautiful and and, and and all that stuff but it's like we have we are so much more than we give ourselves credit for and a lot of these young ladies out there need to realize, realize that too so i just encourage everybody through this wellness fitness journey that they, they recognize all that because a really a truly a truly strong man is not the guy that bench presses 400 pounds it's the guy that's got to get a spirit for god as well as and yeah if he can bench press 400 pounds and great that's awesome too yeah yeah that's so good that's so good well how can people get a hold of you and uh, for personal training, for, for whatever you have to offer. Yeah, so uh, resultsok.com is our website for Results Fitness Nutrition Center. That's the easiest thing to remember, resultsok.com. We have, you can get hold of, hold of me through the email there. We also have Atterbury Personal Training at yahoo.com, which is A-T-T-E-B-E-R-Y, personal training at yahoo.com. There's only one R in Atterbury. A lot of people spell that wrong. But <laughs> we have, I can give them information on, um, the online stuff of course when this blows over we do we do a lot of program designs for people who live out of the area so i have people that come in from wichita from dallas from tulsa from weatherford places like that and they come and see me about every four to six weeks I teach them how to eat not just here eat this i say i give them like a mini physiology lesson so i, I take a lot of pride in educating my, my clients and and it's not designed for somebody to come see me all the time it's designed for them to do it on their own and yep. then they just come back periodically and, and and i give them a new program check their body fat all that kind of stuff and of course, yeah, we have personal trainers that work for me and, and people come in on average twice a week with us. We don't try to, you know, make people broke. We'd rather have a view of a moderate amount of money spent. And then of course we have general memberships at the gym. They live in the Edmond area. Um, but like I said, any, the online stuff, I mean, I've, I've been doing that for 10 years, but these homes mm -hmm. we're doing right now are specifically designed for people during this time. And we've right. got videos we've made you don't want the video it's cheaper um, but we'll put you a nutrition plan together i'll recommend supplements you can order right to your front door so you don't have to leave the house so it's all really designed for all the stuff that's going on and it's designed for convenience i mean we do live in an amazon.com world if you will and so that's where the online stuff kind of kind of bridges that that business um but yeah we're we just pray for everybody and you know pray that everybody supports each other um i, I do think for the most part, and we're we're seeing that we have a lot more in common than we than we had on a lot of times in our yeah. in our world. I, I hate that people are so mean. Um, I mean, I definitely have my opinions of things, and I'm and I'm definitely um, you know disappointed in different leaders. But I don't. I think people need. I hate when people make broad sweeping statements about everybody. And I think you yeah. have to realize we're all individuals have their own personal experiences, and and I think we're, there's a lot more good in people than people realize. So. But we, uh, you know, I kind of digress there, but it, you know, I want to do some, do some fitness with us. And this is a prime example. I can't just talk about it. You know, no, just yeah. <laughs> yeah. It but all kind of rolls together to me. But, it is. It's you know, so interconnected. Fitness, they need to stay on the fitness during this time. Absolutely. And I, I think that, you know, people like you, people like me, people that are out there that are offering these programs. Oh, the other thing I'll say, you get on our, our results, fitness and nutrition center, Facebook page. We have downloaded, if you scroll down, you'll find different videos from our group exercise instructors. You can watch them for free. One of the funniest ones we have is Amina, one of our instructors, and Amina has a, an English accent, so she's super fun to listen to, but she uh, <laughs> put together like a family workout using toilet paper. It oh, is, nice. It's, it's hilarious. And <laughs> what you can do with your kids, and it's not easy. I mean, 
mean, it's a lot of core work and balance. And, you know, Menza, she was, uh, I forget what country she's from, but um, I think she got her degree from Cambridge, so it's pretty impressive. Nice. But she, uh, she is, was an Olympic hopeful track athlete. Wow. Whatever, from the country she originated from, which I, I'm sorry to say I can't remember, but she is an, she's an animal. She has like three kids. Um, <laughs> and and that workout is on your Facebook page? Yeah, oh yeah, it's it's, okay. it's hilarious. So, but yeah, and we're downloading. I think today we're going to download some yoga stuff from Barbara, our our uh, head instructor. Yeah, and so those are all free. So jump on cool. there, enjoy them, you know, and and we'd love to, you know, if, if it's all the dust settles and people want to come join and do the classes regularly, obviously we'd love to have them. Sweet, but I appreciate you having me on here, Jake. And I, yeah, God bless you for what you're doing and and uh, being a witness uh, for the Lord and and. Yeah. And bridging it with fitness and wellness and and all the things that we all really need more and we we know and yeah. uh, so well I appreciate you I appreciate your time and and all that you're doing too so uh, we'll post a link to everything with this video to your website and your Facebook page so people can get in contact with you but uh, look forward to getting a workout with you sometime in the future absolutely come by anytime love to have you <laughs> all right man we'll talk to you later all right take care.